Hello, and welcome to section 13.2, Polar Equations of Conics and Other Curves. Now, when we talk about polar equations, we don't mean this type. We're talking about this type. At the end of this section, you should be able to answer these questions. How do we represent a point in polar coordinates? How can we represent a point in different ways with polar coordinates? What are the relationships between r, theta, x, and y? What is the general equation for a limason utilizing pol polar coordinates? What conditions are necessary to generate limasons with an inner loop, limasons without an inner loop, and cardioids? How do graphs utilizing the cosine function differ from graphs using the sine function? What is the general equation for conics utilizing polar coordinates? What conditions are necessary to generate ellipses, hyperbolas, and parabolas? What is the relationship between limassons and conics? What is the general equation for a circle util utilizing polar coordinates? What is the general equation for a line utilizing polar coordinates? Let's start by talking about what polar coordinates are. Well, polar coordinates are simply another way of describing a location on a graph. Originally, we started by describing a location with an x and a y coordinate. Here, we're going to use a new coordinate system, which has the same origin as our x, y, or Cartesian system. But from there, we're going to use a polar axis, which is the same as our x-axis, in the Cartesian system. To describe our location using polar coordinates, we're going to write an ordered pair just like we did with x, comma, y, only now our point here this would be 7, comma, 8 using x, y coordinates will now be described using r and theta, where theta will be the angle measured counterclockwise from the polar axis, or the horizontal axis. So this angle right here will be theta, and r will be the directed distance from the origin. So from the origin out to the point, that length will be our r value. So that is our theta and our r. So what are the implications of this new location system. Well, let's take a look. Here we have what you will come to recognize as a polar coordinate system with rings describing the distance away from the origin and spokes at certain angles. Now, to describe a location, we talk about an angle and a distance. So let's pretend that our friend here, the ant, is going to turn 45 degrees and step out five units. So that would put him out here on the fifth ring at 45 degrees away from the horizontal. So let's mark that spot right here. That spot would be described as five units away from the origin at 45 degrees. But here's the interesting thing about polar coordinates. Let's say instead of turning 45 degrees, our friend the ant turned 225 degrees. So now he's looking down into the third quadrant. But then he gets scared, so he backs up five steps from the origin. and he ends up at exactly the same spot he was before. But that location, if we think about what was necessary to make him arrive there, was turning 225 degrees and backing up, so going negative five steps. We could also Instead of turning a positive 45 degrees, we could turn a negative 
315 degrees. So let's turn him. There's 90, 180, 270, and 315. And then if he walked forward five steps again, he would be in the same spot. So going five steps forward at negative 315 degrees allows me to arrive at the same spot. Let's bring him back to the origin. Whoops. Not the spot, but move him back to the origin. And now, let's say if we can think of one more way to have him arrive at the same spot. I've gone a positive r and a positive theta, a negative r and a positive theta, and a positive r and a negative theta. Can we come up with a way to have a negative r and a negative theta? I'll let you think about it for a second. Okay, so if we need a negative r, that means we need to be facing away from our desired location. But we also need a negative theta. So instead of rotating counterclockwise, we're going to rotate clockwise. So I need to rotate my friend the ant this far, which would be a negative 135 degrees, so that now I can back up five units and end up at the same location. So here are four different ways to describe the same location using positive and negative values of r and positive and negative values of theta. You might want to think about how we could extend this to coterminal angles. What would be another positive r, positive theta combination that would allow me to end up in the same location. I'll let you think about that one. Now, since we can now describe a, a location in Cartesian coordinates, or x comma y, and in polar coordinates, r comma theta, there must be some way to create or describe the relationship between the Cartesian coordinates and the polar coordinates. Well, if we look at our diagram, we can see that we have a right triangle where x and y are the sides and r is the hypotenuse, and theta is our interior angle. So the relationship should revolve around the properties of a right triangle. If I want to describe the relationship between x, y, and r, I use the Pythagorean property. r squared equals x squared plus y squared. So if I knew x and y, I could then calculate r. Now theta is, if I know x and y, is the relationship arctan of y over x. So again, if I know y and I know x, I can find the angle necessary to describe the location. What about if we have r and theta and we want to figure out x and y? Well, again, we use our trig relationships. If I know r and theta and I want to find y, the relationship between r, y, and theta is the sine relationship, where sine of theta is equal to y over r. So if I want to find y, y is simply going to be r sine theta. And using the same logic for x, x will turn out to be r cosine theta. So let's look at the implications of this new coordinate system. We're going to go into our calculators and use a new mode. So if we go into mode, you'll see that down here on the fourth line, we're going to go into polar mode, P-O-L. And we want to make sure we're in degrees. Now, the next thing we're going to do is set our window and change the format. So first, 
let's just do a standard zoom. Standard, number six. Okay, looks the same. But if we go into our window now, we can see that our settings have been changed. We now have a theta min and a theta max going from 0 to 360, so describing the angle, and the theta step of 7.5, and, and then our x and y values are our standard negative 10 to 10. We're also going to make one more change. We're going to go into the format menu, which is second zoom, and change this top line from rectangular graphical coordinates to polar. So we're going to go over and select that. Now we can go in and input an equation. So let's go to y equals. We can see right away that it's different. Instead of having y1, we have r1. And our equations, instead of using an x variable, we're going to be using a theta variable. So let's start with a simple equation. Let's put in 6 sine 5 theta. and see what our graph looks like. Wow, that's a pretty funky graph. We call that a five-leaf rose. And there's our graph from 6 sine 5 theta. What I'd like you to do is experiment with this graph and change the 5 theta to other values for the coefficient. Try 3, 4, 6, 7. See what kind of images you get and see how changing that coefficient changes the graph.